In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Twisby Eco. So let's jump straight to the end with my thoughts on this pen. This is an inexpensive pen, which really does make it one of the best introduction pens to a piston filler. Perhaps not the best pen for someone to start with in fountain pens if they're worried about bottled ink. But if you're not worried about bottled ink, it really is a great option to start, especially at its price point. The nibs, generally speaking, are really good and pleasant to write with. Tremendous ink capacity, which again is a plus for it. The only thing that people run into is if they want to change inks more often, and my answer is write more, then you'll be able to fill it up more often with different inks. It does come in a number of varieties. This is not the T version. The T version has a different shaped section. I haven't tried one of those, and I don't know that I'm going to go out of my way to try one. But this on the market has a solid place, which it deserves because it is such a good pen. Now that we know how I feel about the Twisby Eco, let's see how I got to that opinion, starting with the unboxing. The Twisby Eco comes in a box like this. Something that comes in the box is a wrench to disassemble the pen, and that is good and bad at the same time. If you disassemble your pen too much, you stand more chance of simply cracking the body for over-tightening it. Now it does come with a silicone grease, which you can use for greasing the piston mechanism, but I found that the more solid grease works best for the end of the piston in the cylinder. With the pen out of the box, we need to get to the nib. And as long as it doesn't take 20 turns to uncap it, I'm generally okay. So how many turns does it take to uncap this pen? The Twisby Eco takes one turn to uncap, just barely more than one. With only one turn to uncap, it is really good for students in class because you're able to recap it as you're paying attention to whoever that instructor is and then writing down the important parts, it's not gonna slow you down. The thing I have noticed is compared to some other pens and not that it's really a problem, but this one is a little bit louder in uncapping, which is kind of weird to say. This gets us to the nib. This pen has a steel broad nib on it. As I said, I generally find the nibs to be pretty pleasant on the Twisby Eco. Now, I've only had one Twisby nib that I had a lot of issues with. It wasn't on an Eco and it was their stub. Their stub I found to be just so dry it was difficult to use. But anything else hasn't been any kind of a problem. Very nice writer, very smooth. Now, let's ink this pen up. The Twisby Eco is a piston filler and holds approximately 1.8 milliliters of ink. The ink for today is Higgins Black. That 1.8 milliliters of ink is more than enough to give you many pages of writing throughout the day or a lot of letters with your pen pals. Really not anything that you can say bad about it unless you're worried about it being a piston filler. I like piston fillers, especially for a full day of work. As a habit, I don't normally post my pens, but some people prefer to post pens and some pens need to be posted to use comfortably. Technically, this pen can post. However, it tends to not be as secure as I would prefer. I have found that while writing with it posted that sometimes the cap would shake off if you're writing a lot. 
For that, I tend to use it without posting, but I do think that many people could post it without any difficulty. If you enjoy videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, the important part, the writing sample. While writing with it, the thing that does stand out a little bit to me is the thinner section of the pen. It's not really a problem, but it does make my fingers feel a little bit more cramped while writing on a longer writing session. So when I'm writing this full page, I do feel my fingers not cramping, but like they're a little on top of each other more than I would prefer. It gets much thinner and that causes me to move more down on the section. At times, I have to make a conscious effort to move my hands up to get away from that much thinner section. Not that that's a huge problem for this pen. It writes smooth the whole time and it has a good generous ink flow. I've never had an ink that does not flow through a Twisby Eco. Truly, truly a workhorse of a pen. If you need a good daily writer and you wanna be able to come in pretty inexpensive as the entry point in fountain pens, this one's it, this is a workhorse. And it's a workhorse that, while for people that aren't used to pens may seem expensive, in the fountain pen world is very affordable, which means a couple of things. If I accidentally were to drop it and break it, it's not gonna break my heart. If it were to disappear off my desk, this isn't a big deal. It's not like a $500 pen went missing. So its price point really does help sell this pen. And I, you know, the writing is again, still very smooth, very pleasant. Now for something a bit more standard in comparing writing size. I use Namiki Blue to do this. Here's how it compares to a Yovo Extra Fine on the left, a medium in the middle, and a 1.1 stub on the right. I didn't see anything oddball about the writing size while writing, so it's not like you head into it to get a fine and it writes more like a medium and you're unhappy because of cheap paper. Now, if you're using a medium or broad on something like cheap paper, then obviously it's gonna look much more. I would be interested in giving a shot to one of their extra fines to see how that worked out on cheap paper. I'm just not willing to purchase another pen to try it. But how does it compare in writing size to other nibs I've used? Looking at the writing of a Twisby Eco with a broad nib. Here it is next to a Pilot Custom 823 with a broad nib a Franklin Kristoff Model 66 with a broad SIG, a Visconti Medici Oversized with a broad nib, a Pilot Metropolitan with a 1.0 stub, a Pelican M800 with a medium nib, and a Diplomat Arrow with a broad nib. So it isn't a review without some size comparison. Here it is capped, here it is uncapped, 
And here it is posted. It doesn't start off really looking like it would be a larger pen, but in reality, its size is in line with some of the larger pens that are out there. It's not an oversized pen by any means, but it's certainly large enough that it's not looking like a really tiny pen. It is much larger than things like a Pelican M200 or the Waterman Graduate. Much thicker, much more comfortable to use. At this point, we need to clean out the pen just because it's dirty. Be sure to check out the next pen review when we look at the Lamy All-Star. If you want to be able to support not just my channel, but any reviewer, then when you make a purchase, be sure to tell that retailer where you heard about it. Thanks for watching.